Yo, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm JSCar, and today I'm going to show you how I made my new song, Bright Lights. The idea for this video is to hopefully inspire you. I'm not here to brag about the whatever sound design or like the expensive plugin that I'm using. None of that matters. As you can see in my studio, I'm not... This studio right now is all I have to make music. I'm not using any expensive analog equipment. I'm using computer, audio interface, which I rarely use, and headphones. And that's it. I'm really hoping that once this video stops or even before, if you're already feeling inspired, pause this video and go and make music right now or do whatever you, you're passionate about. Because I know not all of you are producers. Anyways, how did this song start? It's, it's actually a very straightforward story. This song started off thanks to a Swedish House Mafia ID. It has this really trap formant vocals and this very mystical sounding chords. And I was like, bro, I wanna make something like that. So, so I went into FL Studio and I started writing chords. I just started writing chords. And if you're ever struggling with starting your projects, maybe this story can inspire you. Find a good reference song and then start working with that reference. What I used from the song as a reference was the structure. Um, when you listen to that Swedish House Mafia demo, you can hear that it automatically starts with some drums. So automatically, uh, so you can hear here, let me actually put my headphones on. You can hear, it all starts with this kick. And it doesn't have any uh, lows on it. It has zero lows, but you can hear that it sort of gives some lows as we're reaching the buildup. So it's getting puncher and puncher. Yeah, as you can hear, the buildup has a ton of flow frequencies. And then it rolls it off. I knew that I had to start with drums, so I started off with a kick, then I put in some hi-hats. Almost, almost like a techno kind of hi-hat. And then I put uh, another hi-hat here. There's another hi-hat. And then there's another hi-hat. So the song goes full on energy as soon as it starts. Even though we haven't heard any of the sounds on top, like a synth, uh, we know that these drums are very energetic. And then after eight bars, another hi-hat comes in that sounds like this. A little bit brighter. Mixing wise, there's nothing crazy happening, just an EQ on everything, you know? Getting rid of the lows. And I'm sending everything to a bus channel where I have the lows out and then I have an endless smile to make sure that everything just disappears before the buildup or towards the buildup. Once I had this done, or like the, the jumps at the start, the ones that are creating a lot of tension, I started off writing some of the chord progressions. And the chord progression, one of the plugins I ended up using a lot, and I'm actually using it on every single plug, every single song now, it's called The Prince by Credo Audio. And this uh, preset called Bump Staircase ended up being perfect for, our, for what I was doing, which sounds like this. This is basically the main synth of the song. And if you listen to this chord progression, it sounds like this. Let me show you.
if you listen to this chord progression, you'll notice that the first eight bars feel a little bit thinner than the next eight bars. And that's because I'm adding some extra notes. Well, the first thing that I do whenever creating a chord progression, is start off with a bass progression that you enjoy, and then find a single note on top of that chord progression that makes sense. In this case, I found that C sharp really sounded or sounded really good with this bass progression. Let me show you, for example, I'm just gonna get rid of every note that I added. Sounds like this. If I add the C sharp, This note creates tension and it also helps you anchor everything that you're doing. Then I went ahead and added some notes. If you actually see this as a major chord, which is one, two, three, four, and then two, you'll notice that I'm I'm actually using the second note of the chord or the or of the triad basically, but one octave higher. Because over here it just felt like yeah. It didn't, it, it wasn't as cool, you know? So I'm using it on top. And instead of using the third or the fifth, I don't know, I think it's the seventh, the seventh note of your chord, I used it only half of the time. So it, this creates some sort of movement or whatever, added some really cool feel to the track. So. I think this is not just a chord progression, but sort of a melody chord progression, you know, because I'm not, I'm not just playing chords all the time. I'm doing different types of movement here and there. There should be some sort of theory name to this, but I just don't know it. Okay. Music theories out there that can help me out, help me out because I don't, I don't know. I then added another layer uh, for another synth that sounds I mean, it's called Hollow Window, again from The Prince, and it sounds like this. Really cool. The thing I end up using the most with this uh, The Prince plugging is actually the noise filter or noise uh, oscillator, whatever it is because you can choose from six type of noises. I usually just use a fifth noise and I put it really low in volume, but it creates a lot of uh, texture to whatever you make. So let me actually show you. I don't know, I think I, th I really like the tone it adds to everything. And if, if you actually see the other prints that I'm using, I don't have any noise on it. Uh, but I changed so many things on this uh, preset. And one of the things that I changed was actually the filter. I just try to open it up a little bit more and I kept the sustain all the way up, I think. I did many other things, I think, but I don't know exactly. I don't remember. Um, and I mean, what's next after creating this chord progression? Uh, I create a bass line. And the bass line is super simple. It's actually just following the same bass progression as chords. Duh, kind of simple. And the sound that I'm using is the Prince again. I'm using a brass preset for the bass and it creates such a really good vibe. It's, I don't know if it sounds analog, let me just play it. I'm guessing this one is to create more space and everything and as you noticed, this noise uh, effect is doing a lot of work in there. Without it, with it, it sounds horribly dirty. Like might might be unusable to most of you when you first hear it, but it's not. It sounds really good to me. Uh, then I put another layer of uh, r just a single note playing over and over again. Sounds like this.
And if you can notice, it's actually a very similar preset from the one I'm using for the main sound. But this one moves left to right, left to right. And I achieve this by using an LFO where I control the panning of it. You can see it here. It's moving left to right. You control the speed here. You can do this with any other plugin. Like you don't need to have the prints to make this happen. Uh, shout out to Creative Audio though. If you're watching, if someone from Creative Audio is watching this, really good plugins. But I mean, when you play all the instruments on the breaks together, you get something like this. If you're wondering what I did to this synths, etc., I'm just getting rid of the lows and the highs for most of them. Some of the highs for most of them, I mean, but mostly the lows. I'm just getting rid of the lows. And in this case, I'm using this sort of shelf uh, shape, a low shelf instead of a low cut. I saw someone online say that it sounds better. It like it sounds more natural, whatever. And I've been trying it, but honestly, I don't see such a big difference as they say there should be like, if you're watching this and you think my mixing sounds better on this song than ever before on any other song, let me know. Cause I don't think it does. I think it sounds cool, but it's not like groundbreaking kind of mixing. I don't know. After this, um, actually there's another sound that I want to show you. And it's a sound that I only use four times in the song. And it's this little fellow here sounding like this. Okay, it might sound basic, but once you add a pitch automation, it sounds like this. And it really helps out this bass and also the chords. Check this out. It, it sort of helps me or it helps the track go from the breaks to the buildup. And then on the drop, I also use it again. So it helps you get out of the drop again towards the second buildup and so on. It's a very, very simple sound. It's very distorted without any effects. Sounds like this. It kind of sounds bad, to be honest, but I did use some distortion on it and some envelope. So I'm using trash. I'm using a crunchy taco distortion, crunchy taco type of distortion. Very Mexican of me to use this distortion. I know, uh, and it's bipolar. I'm not bipolar, but this, this, uh, distortion is bipolar. Then we got a uh, convolver and I'm using copper bus convolver on this. You guys know, I love isotope trash isotope. If you're watching this video, please sponsor me. I use it on every single video and I'm getting rid of the lows and the highs. And afterwards I'm using an endless smile, which I always have on endless smile creates ambience. It's sort of a reverb. Basically it is a reverb and I'm using it all the time and I'm using a kickstart, which I'm using on the drop, but I put all the volume down and you get something like this from this to this. One of the ways you can make sure your sounds move to the back is by using reverb, using maybe a convolver, which is another type of reverb and also getting rid of your high frequencies. So get rid of the highs, get rid of the lows. That's going to make it go all the way to the back. Anyways, uh, that's it for the breaks. And it was important to me to mention this breaks because like I said, I started off this idea because I heard someone else's music. I'm hoping this has happened to you with possibly one of my songs. I listened to that song and inspired me so much. And I was like, I need to make something as good. I followed the structure using it as a reference. I made the chords and, and I didn't have the sick vocals that they were using. So I was like, what do I do now? Cause I, I, I only had this. <laughs> Oh, I actually forgot um, one extra thing that I added sci-fi type of reese bass sounds like this and another one 
In order to create this sound, what did I do? First, you want to find a re-space, okay? In this case, I'm using in this case I'm using Harmer. And I'm adding a ton of distortion with isotope trash. Without it, with it. And the magic here comes when you turn on Legato and Portamento. So anytime you play a note on top of another note, you'll create movement. It will glide. Uh, you can select the speed, something around here. Works fine for Harmer. And uh, all you have to do there afterwards is create a melody or a single note and write some notes on top. This is how your melody should look like, something like that. If you play this at the exact same time, it's not gonna glide, okay? So you need to make it glide after you play one of the notes. So you get something like this. Sounds like... And then this one. Sort of like a villain kind of thing. It's really cool. Once upon a time, I had a song with Nat James, which was actually Trap, and it was called Bright Lights. Uh, I sent the Trap track to Nat James, and he worked on it together with one of his friends. And they honestly killed it. And I really liked the song. I really liked the Trap song, but it, it, I wasn't able to make it fit on my vision, you know? I think the song sounds really good, and if you want to listen to it, um, let me just play it. I'm gonna pretend that I'm playing it right now, okay? Just so you can listen to it. Break lights, wait, I ain't in my right mind, quit. Take cover like a bombing in the night sky blitz. Anyways, this was the idea, and it was really good. However, I don't know. I was working on this project, and then I. When I listened to the Swedish House Mafia track, they had some rap vocals on it. And I was like, if only I could find a rap vocalist that could do something like this. If only. And then I remembered. I have some Nat James vocals on my computer, which I've never used. And I'm hoping he hasn't used them either. I don't think at the time he even remembered anything about Bright Lights. But uh, before I reached out to him, I actually started working on it. When Nat James first sent me this vocal for the trap song, it originally sounded like this. Bright lights, break lights, wait, I ain't in my right mind, quick, take cover like a bombing in the night sky blitz. When I heard it, I was like, bro, once again, based on the style of the vocal for the Swedish House Mafia track, what I ended up doing to the vocal was actually shifted down a couple uh, formant. So you can actually see here, you can use Stretch Pro to do this. And I just put it down 300 cents. When you do this, it turns your vocal into some sort of, let me do it while we listen to it. Here's how it sounds with effects and everything, but here's how we do with this. Bright lights, I ain't in my right mind. Cover like a woman in the night sky blitz. The vocals, as you can see, this vocals now sound super stretched because the original track was at 175. So I took it down all the way down to 128. Now the vocal is stretched and I cop, I swear, I spent a couple days working on this vocal, making it work for this track because it wasn't originally made for this. And I switched some of the melody. I got rid of lyrics that were important that are no longer there. And I, I did some surgical type of work on this. As you can see it, as you can see it here, it's like I went into every single syllable and I made it work with this BPM. And I also made it work with the rhythm that I wanted to do. So I changed a lot of this vocal. Um, and like I've said, when I was working on it, Nat James didn't know that I was working on it with his vocal. I just did it because I was having fun doing it. Uh, so I ended up doing something like this. I wrote, I first worked on the first vocal. It sounds like this. Bright lights, I ain't in my right mind. Cover like a woman in the night sky blitz. Of course, there's a lot of delay happening with Pluralis, a really cool uh, delay plugin. And I'm also using reverb, a lot of reverb in there. It's just two cent channels. And for the vocal, I'm adding so many things, bro. It's, I'm using a, a Auburn Sounds Couture. I'm also using some 
parametric EQ to get rid of the lows and the highs. I'm also using some jack delay. I remember this guy sent me these plugins for me to review. I haven't reviewed them, but uh, I was using some delay because I wanted some extra delay in there. And I'm using a preset from Studio Verse called Kodak Black Vocal Chain, which I felt really uh, fitted the vocal or the style of vocal that I was doing. So after this, I doubled the vocal and then I create some staffs with it. I think he sent me some staffs actually, never mind. So this is just the staffs part. I found the ones that fitted, the ones that I, that I cut, and then I added some ad lifts, and it sounds like this. Bright lights, uh, bright mic. Bright lights, uh, bright mic. Mm. Night sky bliss. Uh. So when you play everything together, it sounds like this. Bright lights, I ain't in my right mind. The, the, the effects on here are really heavy, so I'm sorry if it doesn't play the way it should play. Bright lights, I ain't in my right mind. Cover like a booming in the night sky blitz. So I mean, once I worked on it, I swear, I, I, every, every part that you see here, every single part that you can see here, I spent hours on it making sure that everything had a good rhythm, making sure that everything was sounding really cool. So you get something like this. I Once I worked on the on the vocal and everything, I mean, the buildup, the breaks and the buildup were done. And now I had vocals. So I reached out to Nat James and I told him, bro, I made something that sounds really good, but I don't know if, if you're down to make it work because I know that this is a vocal that you intended to use on something else and like, Please let me know. So a couple days later, he replies and he just says like, bro, that sounds sick. Just go ahead with them, please. So now that I had permission, I was like, hmm, I have to do something really cool with them. So I made a build up. I swear I didn't have the drop before. Like I was working on the build up by itself. No drop, nothing. So what I did to the vocal was first, I did the build up, something cool that I did. If you can hear it, it sounds like this actually. <laughs> In case you guys want to know how I made this effect, first, find a syllable or some sort of word that the vocal says that you want to repeat. In this case, I found this. Then, 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 then. It doesn't quite say anything, but that's the last phrase or the last word uh, on the vocal that I have, which is this the top of my percent. So I wanted to re repeat the last syllable of percent, which is end, end, end. So what I did was first, I made this unique and I dragged it into, you guessed it, Quanta. And now it sounds like this, watch. So I put it into a forward direction. I put the length all the way a hunt to 100 and I play it around with grains, source position and also grain length. When you make it go from down, from bottom up, bottom up, you'll get something like this. Really, really cool idea. For the other view, I actually made a different type of automation, which sounds like this. So now you know. So I made this vocal, everything was sounding super interesting, super huge. You can hear this. The energy on it is crazy. I think it sounds very intense. Everything is changing. I added a lot of movement to the buildup by adding some filter cutoff um, automations where I'm automating the high frequencies. So at the beginning, you don't have many high frequencies and then you, you're getting a lot of, a lot more high frequencies as the buildup comes. 
you're also getting some reverb to get rid of some of the sounds as the buildup comes, as you can see here. And a, a lot of automations in there. I'm actually hiding the kick too before the buildup. So some things are getting rid of some of that. I'm getting rid of some of the highs on some things and I'm getting rid of some of the lows on some things and I'm doing the inverse on other things. I'm adding some bass to something. I'm adding some highs to something else. So yeah, with this, all these automations, I'm just adding tension. Easy. And then here's where everything is, everyone's watching this video for. I don't want to make this so long because I already spent so much time. Uh, but anyways, this is a masterclass. This is not a how I made. I think this is a masterclass. I'm going very deep into it. So here's how everything happened with the drop, okay? Step one, put the chord progression from the breaks on the drop. So this is what I made, basically. This is the exact same bass progression, okay? And what I did was, you're not gonna believe it, but the drop is actually the, the main, main, main sound is actually the Prince again. And it's actually a layer of the Prince. It's, it's three sounds. It's one of the sounds, it's called Last Wolf. Second sound is called Cold Stroll. And then the other one's called Dimensional Lake. When you put all these three together, you end up with something like this, with something like this, which is, like I've said, the exact same chord progression from the break. One of the best ways out there to make your music sound less robotic and more human is making sure that the melodies that you're making are not exactly on grid. I mean, for this track, I'm not just following what I just said, I'm actually breaking it to another level. That's why it sounds so like weird. It sounds like this. If I put a metronome on this, watch this. Anyways, uh, so this sound basically is three sounds. Second sound sounds like sounds like this. Third one. And what am I doing to the sounds? I'm actually adding some isotope trash. First sound actually. First sound. No, the main sound is actually this one, my bad. I'm using isotope trash on all of them. Different types of isotope trash because I wanted to, um, I wanted to add, I, watch this, without it, with it, it's adding a lot of grittiness. If you ever want to make your sounds sound wider, there are many techniques you can use, but my favorite ones, the best ones from my experience is one, using Convolver or Reverb. With Convolver, you can create a, a, a space on your sound. In this case, for example, I'm using a Convolver and I'm using a very small amount of mix, but it creates extra space for the leads. And the next tool you can use to make it wider, in this case, I'm using Stereo Shaper and I'm putting it I'm delaying the sound 4.9 milliseconds to the right, and I'm dephasing it 61% to the left. That's way, that way I'm creating a really, really uh, wide sound. Without, without this effects, you'll notice how small it sounds. Watch this. So without effects. With effects. The easiest way to think about a convolver, it's a reverb without a tail. That's basically how I like to think about it. But overall, this is my technique to make it sound wider, you know? And then I have, uh, for the other sounds, I'm pretty much doing the same thing, you know? Stereo imager, but I'm delaying it six milliseconds to the right. So a different amount, that way you're gonna create a whole picture, a whole place, a whole ambience where people can feel like, oh, I'm somewhere. This sound is here, this sound is here, this sound is here. So for the next sound on the drop, I'm using Isotope Trash, again, Convolver and Distortion, and I'm using a Stereo Shaper. 
and I'm just dephasing it 51% to the right, making it really, 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 really wide. And now after creating this main sounds, honestly, the other sounds are not as important, to be honest. These are the soul of the track. But I did use some uh, basses, which is, of course, which is, of course, my sub, which is called sub actual. This sub, again, I've been telling you guys, it's a sub actual. It's, and you can actually find this sub at store.jsk.com. It's on most of my preset packs, actually on the Future of House. You can find specifically this one, but I use it on all of my songs, really. It's on every song I make, the same sub. And I'm using an extra lead, an extra bass from Evo Sounds, but it is not exactly as you hear it. Let me be honest. It, it's not really the preset. Without it, it sounds like this. Without any effects, it sounds like this. See? But with effects, you can pretty much just use any, any bass and you would get something like this. Um, but I'm using Isotope Trash. Again, I'm adding some distortion, hard chip distortion, some convolver, alum aluminum dust, condenser mic, and I'm using some dynamics on it to control it. So it's not a, like crazy attacky. Then I'm adding another bass, which is really wide. And of course, for this lead, all I'm doing to this bass is actually get rid of the lows and some of the highs. When you play all of these together, you start hearing the song. But let's not forget about the white noise preset that I use. It sounds like this. In order to make this white noise feel like all I'm doing is using a ring modulator. I'm using Melda ring modulator MB and I'm using double modulation. Simple. That's how it's doing it. When you put it together, it, it gives a lot of sound. Without it, and then I decided I needed a little bit more layers because I I wasn't really hearing what the main melody was. So here's where I started making it. This is just helping adding some extra harmonics in there. So another lead and another lead. Basic shape, filter, white noise, distortion, and of course, isotope trash. Without it, it sounds like this. Listen to this. Distortion. It's unrecognizable, really. It doesn't sound like the same thing at all. That's why I've been telling you guys, Isotope Trash is my best friend. I do so much uh, sound design in here because it's just so cool. It just feels like its own program, you know? So I'm using a trash, uh, I'm using convolver, I'm using filter here too, to get rid of some of the highs. Um, and that's pretty much it. When you play these, play it with this. Wait, actually, uh, the automation on the drop, on the buildup, it might sound off, off key because there's a key automation, I mean a note automation, and I'm sure it's disabled, so it's making everything sound a little bit weird, but it should sound like this now. So then you hear the drop and it sounds like
Okay, okay, okay. Let's not get too much into it. First, what else is there on this drop? First, I'm using a white noise. Okay. Extra white noise. And I'm adding so many little effects here and there to add extra tonality to the drop because you guys said it was too empty. So I started working on it, adding extra and extra and extra sound. So first, I'm automating the reverb to make it go up and down whenever there's something empty like this. I added a police siren on this stop. <laughs> Sounds like this, some punches. And if you guys can notice this, I'm adding some extra like plugs kind of thing. And I'm also, also I'm adding this little effect. Watch this. So this is basically just the ear candy in the job. Once you add the leads. And then you add white noise. Just listening to the ear candy sounds like this. So everything together. Personally, I really, really like this track because it made me challenge myself into making something basic sound full. Uh, if you listen to the breaks, it's something basic. And it made me get out of my comfort zone because I'm not, you're not used to hearing EDM that is not following the grid. Everything on EDM is so robotic. Most of the times it's just like boom, pa, boom, pa. Boom, spun, spun, spun. Everything is everything is always on beat. For this track, I try to put everything out of beat. Some people don't like it. I've seen a lot of comments. Actually, not a lot of comments, maybe one or two. <laughs> but they feel like a lot of comments, okay? It's hard. I see a lot of comments saying like, oh, I don't like the beat part because it's so weird. I don't understand it. So I don't know. I like it. And that's really all that matters at the end of the day. You're making music because you... You want to release the music you want to listen to. And this is something that I want to listen to. Something that scratches my brain and makes me feel something that nothing else does. Nothing, nothing else is able to make me feel what I feel with this song. Nothing. There's not a single track that makes me feel the exact same thing. So that was my goal with this. I'm hoping you guys are feeling something similar with this. And drums wise, what can I tell you guys? The same kick as I always use. Same similar claps, and I'm using an extra kick that sounds like this. Let me just play the kick, the clap. Of course, there are some reverse kicks in, in there, but that's pretty much the drop, really. And I even have some extra sounds. I actually forgot about this. Sounds like this. Repeating throughout the whole job. Just to fill out those empty, empty spaces. And this too. I think that's it. I think that's pretty much it, to be honest. I think that's it, yeah. It's been an hour. I've been recording this video for an hour. And honestly, I feel like I'm 
I'm already feeling dizzy, to be honest. I don't know why. I think there's, I, I need some air or something, but I'm hoping you guys enjoy this video. Deep down in my heart, I really hope you guys did. I hope you guys are enjoying the song. Uh, Bright Lights is a special track for me. To me, if you listen to the drop, Bright Lights give me wings. There, there is something um, godly about it that you, if you pay attention to it and if you open your heart, you might feel it, you know, but either way, um, I'm hoping you guys also learn something from the video, not just get inspired. I'm hoping you guys learn something practical that you can put into work. If you did go apply it right now, because you might forget it. That's honestly what most of the times happens when you were watching a tutorial. I'm sure you watch a tutorial and you never put into practice what you learn. So start doing it. If you're watching a tutorial, pause it and then try the stuff that they do and then go back to do a tutorial so you can actually remember what they teach you. So yeah, I'm hoping you guys enjoy the video. I'm, ho I'm hoping you guys are streaming the song. If you watch this video and you liked it, please go support the channel uh, by listening to the song or if you can get something at store.jsker.com, please do it. Um, so I can keep on making videos like this. These videos are sort of a masterclass. I could, just like many other producers do, sell these videos to you guys, but I'm not doing it, okay? I make my own courses whenever I feel like making courses, but these, you guys deserve to learn, okay? Um, anyways, um, I'm hoping you guys really like this video and I thank you for being here. I'll see you in another video. I'm already dizzy for talking so much. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, this was crazy. Okay, I need to say bye already. See you guys later, okay? Take care. Thank you for watching. Follow, subscribe, everything that goes like that. Okay, bye-bye.